I've got about 45 or 50 miles to go yet. So I need to keep moving, but I need to take a breather. And the wind's kicking up too, which makes it a little tricky. I am exhausted. I've been riding through the desert for about 40 miles. It just keeps going and going. So there I was in the middle of the California desert, starting to show the first signs of dehydration with 50 miles yet to go. How exactly did I get here? Well, let's back up a little bit. See that guy driving the van? That's me. In October of 2015, I decided to bicycle across the country. I'd start in St. Augustine, Florida and follow the adventure cycling Southern Tier map set all the way to San Diego, California. Seeing that I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, I had to figure out a way to get to St. Augustine. So my dad and my uncle volunteered to ride with me to Florida, drop me off, and then take my van back to Pittsburgh. Leaving St. Augustine on the first day here, it's about eight o'clock in the morning. Dad and Uncle Les are heading back to Pittsburgh and I'm starting on the bike. And the journey begins. My dad and Uncle Les just left. So they're heading back to Pittsburgh. And I'm heading towards Palaka. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's an interesting feeling when you first start pedaling on a journey like this. You're thinking to yourself, I've got 3,000 miles to go, and what happens if I have an accident or something happens to me? But then you have these small moments like this. It's a blimp. As I was riding, I heard a noise above me, and it turns out it was a blimp. It's the small distractions like this along your way that make you smile to yourself. For most of my ride across the country, I was on major highways and backcountry roads, but occasionally I was able to jump on a bike trail that would usually make for some easy riding, especially in some of the eastern states. Got a mile or so before my destination. Permanent of the campsite at a state park here in Florida. Looking forward to being there. My camp for the first night.
got down to about 45 yesterday, or last night rather. So it's a bit chilly now, but uh, it should be up in the 60s and hopefully 70s later. Leaving the campsite that morning was a bit challenging. The road leading into it was about a mile and a half to two miles long, and it was nothing but sand. So my tires kept sinking into it as I tried to ride. And this is part of the reason why I have pedals that have a clip on one side and flat on the other. Because riding on this, your tires, you'll be going along really well, and all of a sudden you'll hit that sand, and your bike just sinks, and you need to release your feet pretty quick. Well, I made it to Monticello and uh, staying at a lovely bed and breakfast here. One thing that you learn when you're bicycling across the country is to always appreciate it when you have it good. I had it really good in Monticello. I had a wonderful bed and breakfast to stay at and a good restaurant to eat at. Little did I know the next night would be the complete opposite of this. I'm in Chattahoochee, Florida. This is my tent. Getting some uh, bad thunderstorms and lightning. Some wind. We're in the thick of it now, I think, according to the radar. So far, I'm staying pretty dry. Hopefully it'll be a little bit more mellow tomorrow when I ride. It's been interesting. It got so windy here that the tent pegs on the side of the tent actually blew out. I thought the whole tent was gonna come over, but the top came off. So I got a little bit wet, but all in all, everything's not too bad. I think that's the end of the storm, pretty much. My bike survived, and I got the tent put back together. So with any luck, rest of the night will be uneventful. So right here, this tent peg just blew out and so did the one up there. And that left the top just fly right off. So I'm back in the tent and uh, I think the solution for this evening is to sleep in my rain gear. Get everything dried up and uh, except my sleeping bag got a bit wet. So, I'll deal with that in the morning. I'm going to sleep. Good night. All things considered, I was lucky to just get wet last night. Parts of Louisiana had tornadoes. I just had bad thunderstorms and lightning. I made it to Mariana, Florida, where I set up all of my gear in hopes of drying it out overnight. It's nothing quite like setting up a tent in a hotel room, but you gotta have dry gear whenever you're camping. I couldn't be this close to the beach without actually going to the beach. It's beautiful. 
beautiful here. I don't think I want to leave. Get ready to take the ferry to Dolphin Island. It takes about 35 minutes. And we've got about 20 minutes or so before it gets here. So today is Sunday, February 28th, and I decided to take a break from biking. So I'm gonna enjoy Dolphin Island. There's a Sea Lab aquarium type thing, and there's a fort, and of course there's beaches. So that's gonna be my day today. I decided since I was staying on Dolphin Island for the day that I would visit Fort Gaines. It's a historic fort that was named after Edmund Pendleton Gaines. It was established in 1821 and it's best known for the Battle of Mobile Bay during the American Civil War. Fort Gaines is considered by many people to be one of the nation's best preserved Civil War era masonry forts. So I'm at Fort Gaines at the moment, and if you notice behind me, there is a bridge way off in the distance. So tomorrow, I'll be on that bridge. After visiting the fort, I decided to visit Dolphin Island Sea Lab and Asterium, which houses a stingray pool as well as 31 different aquariums. After my day of sightseeing, I decided to hang out at the beach for a while. The following day would have me riding to Van Cleve, Mississippi, which is about 74 miles away. Mississippi. I have about 20, 25 miles to Van Cleve where I'm staying for the night. I'm on my way to Franklinton, Louisiana. Should be there by today. And uh, I'm doing some laundry, drying some laundry on the back of my bike as I ride. It's been a good ride so far. I think it's only about 50 miles. Haven't had any dogs yet. Yesterday I had about three or four 
dogs give me uh, escorts, if you will. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's been a good ride. I made it to Louisiana, coming in on Highway 26, which is a terrible road for biking. There's no berm, and the sides of the road have those grooves cut in it. So uh, I was very careful to get in here. Hopefully I won't be on it much longer. I don't mind riding in the rain. I mean, when you're riding across country, it's inevitable that you're gonna have to do it at some point. I didn't pack too many clothes. I had my rain gear. I had two pairs of bicycling shorts, a pair of leg warmers, two pairs of shoes, three pairs of socks and underwear, three shirts and some arm warmers, as well as a windbreaker and a light jacket. So my rain gear serves two purposes. Not only do I use it when it rains, but it also keeps me warm on cold days. Heading towards New Roads. This is the John James Audubon Bridge. The Audubon Bridge Corridor in South Central Louisiana is a four-lane elevated bridge structure running for almost two and a half miles. And the John James Audubon Bridge has the second longest cable stayed span in the Western Hemisphere. So I just made it to Bunky, Louisiana. Found this place, Lee's Seafood. I'm gonna grab some shrimp and some rice. And then I'm gonna go on to Bill Platt. Should be there this afternoon. Ooh, that looks good. That is some good eating right there. Look at the size of those shrimp. My goodness. Mmm. Very good. Doggy escort. Well, a few miles back, I lost some rack screws. So I zip tied my rack together on the one side, but the zip tie broke. So now I'm going to take a screw out of this side and put in the other side to give it a little more strength. And I think that'll get me into the Ritter tonight, or close enough at least. Well, because of my rack breaking down, we're doing some night riding. We're getting close to the Ritter. But we got the lights on and we're doing fine. Got a big, got a big shoulder on the road. It's about 2.30 and we made it to Texas. Yay, Texas. Hey, how are you? That was pretty freaky. I didn't even see him there. It's raining a little bit. Doesn't look like it's going to let up anytime soon. And I probably got about 20 more miles to go or so. Still raining. In case you were wondering. I don't mind the crazy rain. Just the lightning I don't like. So we're gonna take a little break.
when you're on a journey like this and everything you own and everything you need is on your bicycle, you tend to want to keep it close to you. So every time that I would go to a hotel or a motel, I'd be sure to take my bicycle in with me. This is pretty much my nightly ritual. When I get to a hotel, even a campsite, I usually end up washing my dirty clothes in a sink before I end up eating. And I usually just use shampoo. Most of my clothing is made out of material that uh, dries really quick. So typically, if I just wring it out in the sink with my hands, it'll dry overnight. And then it's ready for tomorrow or the next day. Got the bike all loaded up, ready to go. Looking a bit cloudy, supposed to have some isolated thunderstorms somewhere, but hopefully we'll miss them. So I uh, was getting ready to go in the store and I dropped my lock as I locked my bike and I rammed the key up in there and now it doesn't work. This is the kind of stupidity that you have to deal with sometimes. Fortunately, there is a construction crew working on the pumps here that had a lock that I could, or a lock cutter thing that I could use. And done. See, when I dropped it, the key got rammed up in there and it won't turn. So, I should have tested the lock before I put it on my bike, but I didn't, but we fixed it. South by Southwest Music Festival in Austin here, and I'm biking down through the middle of it. Well, this is interesting. A bunch of water going over the road up ahead. About a foot of water that we gotta go through. That is absolutely nuts. We're gonna give that a try soon. Oh. Yeah, that was fun. My feet are soaking wet now. It's Easter today. It's about 8.45 a.m. We got an early start because I wanna make up for some lost mileage yesterday. It's a beautiful day out. Okay, I'm in Fredericksburg, Texas, and I wanted to keep moving after I ate lunch, but I came across the National Museum of the Pacific War. So I think I'm gonna take an hour or two and hang out and check this place out.
Well, that's the mountain pass I'm about to go over to get to Lake Heath. And if you look off in a distance, I believe that's the road going up there. It's pretty steep. This hill is not fun. I'm lucky if I can do three miles an hour. But I'm making it up the hill slowly. There is where I just rode from, down in the valley. It took me about 20 minutes to get up here. It was a long bunch of pedaling. Two and a half, three miles an hour. But I made it to the top. At least I think this is the top. I hope it's the top. I was biking on Highway 90 between Comstock and Langtree, Texas when I came upon the Pecos High Bridge. It's the highest bridge in Texas and it crosses the Pecos River. I rode up here, I was told, I, I found a bar in Comstock, Texas about 11 miles back. So of course I had to stop and have some beers and some lunch. But when I was talking to everybody there, they told me I had to stop at the picnic area, which is here and uh, it overlooks the river here. The guardrails on bridges aren't usually very high, so when I'm on a big highway like this, I try to ride in the center as long as there's no cars coming. It's a little spooky when you're on a bicycle and you're able to look right over top the guardrail. It's a long way down. Plus, you have to hold on tight in case there's any big gusts of wind. A big gust of wind on a bridge like this can really push your bike around. Headed to Sanderson, Texas today. I stayed in Langtree last night. Met up with four other bicyclists that are heading east. We sat up and talked a good while. Had a good time. So I don't know if you can see up in front of me here, the white pickup trucks. That's the border patrol. <laughs> Pretty close to the Mexi Mexico border. And uh, you see them quite a lot when you're in this park. It's about five in the morning here. I'm in Sanderson, Texas in my tent and it has been really windy all night. So much so that I'm wondering if my tent's going to stay up. But it has so far. If there's wind like this when I'm riding today, it's going to make it very interesting. Hopefully it's a tailwind. Because those winds are pretty strong. It's 
painfully windy today. I'm trying to make it to Alpine. I'm riding to Fort Davis. And these are the mountains I'm about to go up into. This is absolutely wonderful down through here. The McDonald Observatory is located about 16 miles west of Fort Davis. And to get there, I had to pedal up a long, windy road. After a lot of pedaling, I finally made it to McDonald Observatory, which is right up the hill. And that's where I'm going to spend the rest of my day and most of the evening. Apparently, that's the road I bicycled up today. I'm guessing. The view from the observatories is wonderful. You can see for miles all around. So I spent the day there visiting the different telescopes and learning about the area. I just made it over top of uh, the mountain past the observatories. You can see them in the background behind me. It's a beautiful day for riding. Got uh, going in the van horn today. Once again, the scenery's changed. Looks like it's more desert than it was before. It's pretty neat though. A couple miles back. <laughs> Uh, alongside the road there was an adventure cycling bicycle tour van and the bicyclists were coming up and getting their lunch and stuff and they offered me some water and some soda so I took them up on it because I've got about 50 some more miles to go without any uh, services so once again thank you adventure, adventure cycling At this point in time, I felt like I'd really become one with the road. So of course, fate would deal me a different hand. I got three flat tires shortly after taking that photograph. I was on Highway 10 when it happened. Two of them were from metal pieces of truck tires that I ran over, and one of them was from a thorn. I didn't have much trouble changing the tires, but it did take up some time. As a result, I ended up riding into the evening after dark. Okay, I have now changed the third tire for today. Actually, I had to patch this tube. I don't have any more spare tubes. I only have two. So hopefully I can make it in the Van Horn now. No more flats. I had to stop and put on my nighttime riding so I can be more visible put my light on, turn all my lights on because there is Van Horn. I think it's about three miles away and it's obviously getting dark out. So luckily for me, I'm on the side road and there's literally been one car in the past 20 some miles. So uh, shouldn't be that bad of a ride into town. I'm leaving Van Horn. It's a beautiful day on my way to either Sierra Blanca or Fort Hancock. Well, I'm just now entering mountain time. Yay, another accomplishment. On April 5th, I made my way into El Paso, Texas. It was a good day for riding, sunny and mostly flat. I only had about 30 miles to go from Fabens, Texas to El Paso, so I arrived there midday. 
After I made it to my hotel, I decided to leave my bike in my room and walk across the bridge into Mexico. I decided to take the walking bridge over to Mexico. Because why not? You can walk across the bridge between the United States and Mexico. It'll cost you 50 cents to get into Mexico and a quarter to get back into the United States. My destination in Juarez was the world famous Kentucky Club and Grill. It's famous for being the birthplace of the margarita and the food is really good too. After visiting the Kentucky Club, I set off to explore the city. Juarez became known as the most dangerous place on earth after competing drug cartels waged war on each other between 2008 and 2012. Since that time, the violence has declined substantially. There are plenty of shops and street vendors throughout the city. In the historic center of the city stands the Cathedral of Juarez. You can see it from almost anywhere in the city and it's worth checking out. There are many pecan farms that seem to go on for miles and miles as you bicycle through this part of the country. But before you know it, the scenery begins to change and you're in a whole different landscape. Just stopped at the Border Patrol. Made it through with no issues. Those mountains are starting to get a lot taller. Not a whole lot out here at the moment. Just desert. It definitely looks like it's raining where I'm about to go. Starting up Emory Pass. I expect it to take about two hours. Going uphill, it's nine miles. Still riding up Emory Pass. This hill never ends. It just keeps going up and up and up. I've been riding up Emory Pass for an hour now. I'm about halfway to the summit. I still have to go up there after pedaling for about an hour and a half or so. From way, you can see down there, way down there. Pedaling over Emory Pass in New Mexico was one of the highlights of my trip. With an elevation of 8,228 feet, it was definitely the highest mountain range I crossed. And although it took me more than a few hours of pedaling uphill, I really enjoyed it. It started to rain once I left the summit, so I had to be a bit cautious on most of my descent. I rode for about 17 minutes before getting to the bottom of the mountain. I probably should have put my rain gear on. Eventually it's gonna blow over. So now it's hailing out and thundering. Made it to the Continental Divide, 6,355 feet here in New Mexico. As I was rolling at a good clip, this has been a downgrade here into town here for about nine miles and I'd been moving along about 20 miles an hour and then all of a sudden my back wheel started to flop around a little bit and I have a flat tire. I'm going to show you the worst things that you can run over out here and that's these little things right here. Little pieces of steel. You can't see them and you hit them and they just instantly go through your tire. I may have to change out my back tire. And I think I punctured it right here. A new bike tire got me to Arizona. I think I'm riding the storm out. No rain so far. I'm thinking that I'm probably about 15 miles from Sanford, Arizona.
I'm only about four miles from Sanford, Arizona. And it's pouring down rain, which doesn't bother me, except there's pretty bad lightning. So I found an abandoned house, and I'm just kind of hoping to wait it out. Well, the storm's blown over for the most part, so I've got 5.3 miles to ride. Time to move on. I stayed at this abandoned house during the uh, worst of the lightning storm, but sun's coming out. It's much better riding this morning than it was last night. Another day in the desert. Just figured I'd stop for a moment and check out the view. One thing that I really learned to appreciate on my bike trip was a nice downhill. A 6% grade on a long straightaway meant that I could do about 30 miles an hour without having to pedal. Considering the fact that I could typically pedal about 10 miles per hour with all my gear, 30 miles an hour is quite fast. This downhill stretch of road lasted for roughly 4 miles through central Arizona. Later I decided to stop at the cliff dwellings in Tonto National Monument. To get to the cliff dwellings you have to hike on a dirt trail up the side of the mountain. It gets a little steep at times, but the view at the top makes it all worthwhile. This was definitely one of the most beautiful places that I visited. It was quite a bike ride and quite a hike to get up here, but well worth it. After I left the cliff dwellings, I got back on Highway 188, which skirts the Theodore Roosevelt Lake. I had to pull over for a moment and show you the view of this bridge I'm about to go over. I finally made it to California, the last state of my journey. Riding through the desert in California and the Imperial Sand Dunes was one of the most challenging parts of my trip. It took me 14 hours to ride 90 some miles that day because of the harsh conditions. I had to deal with strong headwinds and sand blowing in my face as well as becoming dehydrated and hungry. But at the same time, it was one of the most rewarding and memorable parts of my trip. I have got to stop and get something to eat. I am exhausted. I've been riding 
through the desert for about 40 miles. It just keeps going and going. I've got about 45 or 50 miles to go yet. So I need to keep moving, but I need to take a breather. And the wind's kicking up too, which makes it a little tricky. So there I was in the middle of the California desert, starting to show the first signs of dehydration. I pulled over and rested for a while, and then I decided that I needed to get some food and water in me. I decided to make some chicken noodle soup and eat some tortilla chips. I stayed there and rested for quite a while before feeling better, and then eventually made my way towards Brawley. I ate some chicken noodle soup and had some tortilla chips and some cookies and drank about a half gallon of fluid, so I'm feeling better. Moving on, getting closer to Brawley, and uh, I think it's still about 40 miles away though, so we got a long way to go yet. In the desert. The first part of the California desert consisted of a lot of rolling hills. It was relatively easy pedaling, but it did eat up some time. Finally, I'm not going up and down hills. That was ridiculous. It was like a really slow roller coaster. Well, I made it to the sand dunes in California. I've got 27 miles to Brawley. to switch out my glasses so my eyes don't get all the sand in them. This is starting to get a little crazy. But we'll make it slowly but surely. May not get there till 10 o'clock, but I'll get there. I'm happy to be doing 6.4 miles an hour. The wind just doesn't freaking stop. Other than that, it's a beautiful day. This road is really not a nice road to ride on. I basically have to make it to the foot of those mountains up ahead which is about six miles from here and you'll notice I'm doing 4.3 miles an hour so we got about an hour and a half of riding left welcome to my world today because of very high winds and bad road conditions I only managed to do about 43 miles this day I rode into Akatia with 35, 40 mile an hour headwinds towards me. It was a fight just to make it there. Despite that, I enjoyed the ride. It was very scenic and very surreal. Once I made it to Okatia, I found a campground that had a two room motel. After I got settled into my room, I decided to take a walk to the neighborhood bar. While I was there, a local was telling me that a bicyclist had had an accident earlier in the day. 
They had to fly him out by helicopter because a big gust of wind blew him off the road. This was the road that I would be on the following day. So of course I thought about that all evening. Gone just over 11 miles so far. All uphill. It's a bit windy. You see that brown looking thing? That is the fence between the United States and Mexico. On the other side of that fence is Mexico. I'm right by uh, Wacoma Hot Springs. about 20 miles outside of San Diego. <laughs> it was about midday on April 30th when I finally arrived at the pier in San Diego. Several of my friends were holding banners and cheering me on as I rode the last several blocks to get to my destination. We decided to grab lunch on the pier so we could talk about my travels. And just like that, my journey of 3,208 miles had come to an end. Thank you.